Okay, well, I'm going to let him explain Brian Cox, and here goes. New piece of kit. Now, it's essentially a particle accelerator. When this plate's heated, particles are emitted. They're accelerated by these electrodes. Okay, there's electrodes here. Rodney's device is a, uh, a venturi that just accelerates it due to its restriction of the particle. They pass through these two plates, across which you can apply a voltage, and they hit the end of the bulb here on a screen which glows so you can see the beam. Now this is a modern version of Thomson's apparatus. Again, we've got the particle accelerator, and there's a screen in there so you can see the beam glow. What Thomson did was he varied the voltage across the plates, and he measured the amount of bending as the voltage changed. That... All right, I'm going to explain what's going on. That is the particle beam, which is nothing more than electrons. Now, electrons in my world are positive and negative, but they spin in one direction. Uh, the positive particles are positive and negative, but they spin in the opposite direction. That's the difference. And if you affect one with a certain polarity, it will spin it off up in the air. And if you affect it with the opposite polarity, it will pull it down. And that's what we see in Rodney's experiments. And that's what I see here. All right, so I'm going to let him finish. That allows you to deduce the mass of the particles in the beams. All right, now, did you hear what he said? That will allow you, depending upon how much voltage it takes to move it, that will tell you how much mass, because it takes one electron volt to move one electron into stability. So if you got 50 electron volts pushing up, and they end up just being, it, it starts to push it upwards, it means you got like 50 electrons up there trying to push backwards. So that gives us the mass of the particles in that stream. All right, let's see what else he's got to say. Now the lightest known particle in Thomson's day was the hydrogen atom. But Thomson found from these measurements that the particles in this beam are almost 2,000 times lighter than hydrogen atoms. All right. Hydrogen atoms are, are supposedly one proton plus one electron. Well, they are f absolutely bigger than one proton because they weigh more than that. They know that. And they are additionally one electron. I agree. But that proton is not a proton. As you, as you think of it, that proton is half electrons and half positive, positive particles. All right, call them positrons. They attach to each other like little bar magnets, or they surround one central core of positiveness. And I think that is the way it happens, because I can see that in some wave function experiments. Right here, let me just show you real quickly why I can say it has some effect like that. You see this? That's just a little magnet. And the electrons are the white, and the dark is the positive. And that is exactly the wave function of a hydrogen. And if you use a big batch of them like this, like a molecule, look at the, look at the interactions there. It's absolutely fascinating. And there is areas here which are highly susceptible to negative and it's highly susceptible to positive. That's how interactions with molecules work. There's a lot could be learned from just this. Anyway, let's go back to Brian Cox. Now, I'm just going to tell you, Brian's going to say that Thompson discovered the first subatomic particle, which was the electron, and that to today is still the smallest particle they can find. However, Rodney and I have seen a smaller particle. Let's look at that, and then we'll continue with Brian. Okay, before I'm going to show you what Rod came up with, with the Venturi, I'm going to just show you what CERN has. Now, they work in this range, these big ones. We worked in the electron neutrino range, electrons. This is a shower. You see this? High voltage. They're over-accelerated above the speed of light. They have to be. They smash into, it was light started out. You saw, you will see, or you have seen, it was red laser when it started. And then it became accelerated. So light is light, accelerated light is accelerated light. It then turned into extremely high speed particle, this right here, after it accelerated, which is the white boson. Zzz, 
going so fast that it cannot interact with anything until it shatters into a cascade of electron particles. Okay, my electron flood theory says that there's only two particles that exist at all. They're a positive, positive electron, really, or an a negative electron. Let's call it an electron and a positron. And they're back-to-back -back dipoles. And CERN is working with protons, which are, like the guy said, 2,000 times, 1,836 times bigger. 918 are positive, 918 are negative. They think that's all one big positive. It is not. When it smashes into each other, they're just breaking off bits and pieces of the same particles, only they're bigger. And I'll show you how I can basically prove that. Look at that particle stream. Look at the collision. Look at what happens. Look at the spins. And then look at this. All right, here's a red laser coming out. It's pulsed red laser. All these little dots are accelerated ether particles. That's the wave elongating, stretching, because it's accelerating through the venturi, which is the two pins here, and stretching, turning into high-speed Cheryankov radiation, and then cascading away as white stripes of bosons, ending up coming out of the venturi here, sizzling away, slamming into space, creating those neutrinos. And this is the particle that nobody but Rodney and I have ever seen, except the ones I've shown. And probably Rodney has shown this one here. I don't think he showed anybody much anything. He was really not interested in the physics of this. He has a whole other thing going on. And he's doing some really interesting work. People should be paying attention, but they don't pay attention to this. And this is very, very interesting, too. So Now, that's the particle. I told you, they're back-to-back -back particles. To me, that's a, a positive, I mean, a, a some kind of energy, and that's a, a, a lack of energy, or a reverse kind of energy. And that looks like a torus, and they look like back-to-back -back dipoles. You see what I see. Coming out of the venturi, it was right over here. I have all better shots of all of these. I just, I just made this collage so it would be easy. Coming out of here, you can see there's an expansion between the particle snaps here, the, the strobe of the particle. It drifts to the left, that means it's spinning to the right as it's going, and it's open down at the bottom and expand, it crushed at the top. It will just in a second or two explode like that. So this is what light really is.